Hello, I'm Tina Valentine. I'm an eighth grade English language arts teacher at Crossings Christian School and an OERB master teacher. Today's lesson, Build a Better Catapult, is brought to you by the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. Let's get started. Today, we will be using the engineering design process to build and test catapult models. Then, I will challenge you to come up with your own design to make a better catapult. Here is the engineering design process that we're going to apply today. Okay, so first we're going to identify our problem. We're going to imagine uh, what that might look like and come up with some solutions and ideas. We're going to design a prototype. We will create, build a pro prototype. We're going to test that prototype. We're going to see ways we can improve it. And then we're going to share our results. We will identify our need or problem by asking a wonder how question. Have you ever wondered how to make a catapult? Have you wondered how a catapult works? Have you wondered how to adjust your catapult to launch an object that goes the farthest? We will identify our need to find the best catapult. The second step is to imagine. Um, this is where we will do some research. Research is a necessary component of the engineering process. I did some research for you, so this is what my research revealed. It revealed a catapult is a device or a machine used mainly in battles of war to hurl or project heavy boulders or explosives a great distance to fend off enemies, uh, protect forts, attack. Uh, designs of catapults have changed and improved over time. The great Leonardo da Vinci came up with his own version of catapults. Look it up, see what you can find. Here are a few images to spark your creative process. Let's take a look at catapults in history. Roll that beautiful catapult footage. get busy in building our catapult models today. Okay, so the materials we're going to need. We're going to need lots of popsicle sticks. Okay, uh, we need rubber bands. We're going to need spoons, plastic spoons. We're going to have some um, items that you're going to want to launch. Uh, we want to kind of make sure that we engage safety. Uh, so we might want to do cotton balls. You might um, ask permission. Of course, you can always use um, these little ping pong balls. Um, I have some paper clips in here uh, that might work and some dice. Um, you're going to need that paper and pencil for notes and designing. Uh, you're going to need some type of tape and then you're going to need a tape measure. Okay, so the three models that we are going to construct today um, is this little basic model here. Um, it's just a spoon on some popsicle sticks. So we'll get to that one. Then we will move uh, to this one right here. It has a little triangular base. You can see that with the spoon. And then the third model that we're going to build today has a square base and a spoon. So let's start um, with this simple right here. Um, you're going to need nine popsicle sticks. So you're going to count out nine popsicle sticks, and then you'll secure the ends um, with a rubber band. So you'll just put a rubber band here on the end of your eight sticks. Then you're going to take your remaining stick, slide it here. So you've got one stick, and then you've got the seven sticks here. Slide it here. Okay, so it looks like this right here. And then we're going to secure the other end with the rubber band. Okay. 
we have this right here. Then we're going to take um, one of our spoons and we're going to put it on top just like this and then we'll secure it with a piece of tape. Okay, so just take off a piece of tape. And it looks just like this. Okay, so we'll just fling the spoon here. Okay, so this is a perfect model of a simple machine. It's called a lever. Um, so we have the popsicle stick propped up here uh, by a fulcrum, uh, which would be our pivoting point. So we can move the fulcrum if we need to. So this is something we can test to see where we can move that fulcrum so that we get the best launch. Okay. Um, a lever will magnify the force you put on it um, in the fulcrum, the pivoting point. When the pivoting point is closer to your force than it is to your load. Okay? So that's, that could be something that we can test. We can move it this right here back and forth and test what works best. All right. So for our second one, okay, looks like this. We've got to build some triangular bases. Okay, so we're going to need a total of seven popsicle sticks. Okay. Okay, so you'll take three of them and you're going to form a triangle just like this. And then we're going to take a rubber band and we're just going to attach it where those two ends intercross, intersect. Okay. And then we'll do that on these ends as well. And so we're going to be making two triangular bases. So I have a triangular base here and a triangular base here. I'm going to overlap my triangular bases just like this. I'm going to secure two, so I have one, two, three points, two of the points with rubber bands. And then I have this one that opens up just like this. I'm going to take my popsicle stick and I'm going to attach one at the bottom and one at the top. Okay. And then it's going to look just like this right here. Okay. So I want to get those rubber bands on there fairly tight on there. Again, more investigation, how tight you want it once we start uh, testing it. And then I'm going to attach a spoon to that single stick with a piece of tape. And then that. Um, on the third model, you're going to need nine popsicle sticks. Stack right here, there are six. So I'm going to take stick, six of the sticks just like I did last time, I'm going to stack them on top of each other and then I'm going to secure them with rubber bands. Take a single stick and put it here in the middle. I'm just going to kind of go from the front, kind of cross it to the back, cross, cross, over, cross it and then back around to the top to secure that on there. Okay, now I'm gonna get ready to add some arms here on the end. So I need a popsicle stick to go here, secure that on there, here, and then I will take my last stick after I have those arms created and do my back stick, okay? So once I have that, Again, I'm going to have to secure a spoon to, to my arm with tape. Okay. So now we have our three models that we made, and we're getting ready to test them. But first, let's talk about the science behind the catapult. The energy is added and stored in the popsicle stick when the tiny projectiles are added to the spoon. 
When you let go of the popsicle stick, the stored energy is transferred to the object launched in the spoon and then it flies through the air. Catapults also use elastic energy, which is transformed into kinetic energy under the tension stored in the rubber bands. The amount of force is directly related to the amount of mass. So if the mass of the projectile is increased, then it requires more force to convert the stored energy into kinetic energy. The extra force is created in, by using more elastic bands. The transferred kinetic energy is the main reason for throwing the projectile out of the spoon. Okay, now we are ready to test our model. So for the video, we are going to test model number one. Um, and then once we're finished uh, with the video, you can go and test your other models as well. Uh, so we're going to make sure we have a flat surface. Uh, we've taped down our tape measure here. Uh, so you can use centimeters or inches. Uh, I have uh, inches marked down here. So we're going to be using inches today. Um, and we're going to use the cotton ball to launch because it's super safe. Um, make sure that when we test all the models, we're going to be using the cotton ball. Uh, and then later on, um, after for fun, you can use the other items as well. Um, so after, as we're testing, um, you can also be looking at the discussion sheet, which is found below the video. Uh, the discussion questions just have uh, some questions to kind of uh, make you think about ways that you can improve your catapult. Um, you're also going to be using um, your data sheet. Um, so on the data sheet, you will mark uh, whether you are measuring in inches or centimeters. You will mark um, the item that's being launched. Um, and then I have it set up for 10 trials. You certainly can do more, uh, but the 10 trials just kind of keeps it kind of neat. So once I do my 10 trials, I will add the total and then divide by how many of our trials I had. So my data sheet has set up for 10, so I'll divide by 10. And then I also want to mark my farthest distance. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so we're just going to start here and we're going to push down um, our lever here, push down our catapult, and we're going to launch. We're going to record where the cotton ball lands, not where it bounces. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so very good. That was about 33 inches. I'll mark that on my data sheet. I will get my next cotton ball and launch it. Okay, that was about 29 inches. And then I will get another cotton ball. Oh, wow, that went pretty far. That went 47 inches. I will mark that on my data sheet as well. Okay, I will continue launching my catapult until I have my 10 trials. I will collect data on my data sheet uh, for that catapult. So again, I will mark on there um, whether I'm measuring in inches or centimeters. I will tell what I'm launching and then record my data. Down here, I'm going to find the means. So if I do 10 trials, then I will uh, divide that total by 10. Uh, to find my mean and then I also want to document my farthest launch. In this case it was 47 inches uh, out on the tape measure. So again I will take all of my other models, I will repeat that same process and record my data. Okay so what did we learn today? Uh, we worked through the engineering process, we identified a problem, we imagined uh, some solutions to that problem. Uh, we looked at design and uh, we created models uh, for catapults. Uh, we tested our catapults. Um, hopefully you were thinking of ways to improve the catapult as we were going along and you took notes. Um, and then we shared um, our outcomes with our data. Here comes your challenge. Okay. So it's time for you to ignite your creative spark. You're going to use what you've learned in our activity to design your own catapults. You're going to use that engineering process to identify your problem to build a better catapult. Imagine ideas. Maybe you might want to go do some research. There's limitless information on the internet. So with your parents' permission, uh, go online and see what you can find. Uh, design your prototype with a sketch or design. 
or a diagram, create your prototype, test it, evaluate the solutions, and then share your solutions and then redesign if you need to. Okay, so I have an assignment for you. Okay, you're going to design and build a better catapult. Then you're going to write an advertisement for your new prototype, Catapult. Name your design, make a slogan for it, um, include information about your catapult. You're going to give the who, what, the when, the where, the why, uh, and then again, just provide any information that you can have to kind of sell your catapult. So I am so excited to see your fabulous creations. Use the assignment form, build a catapult, and advertisement to write or type your advertisement. Attach a photo of your creative design and prototype to put on social media. Tag at OERBOK on Instagram and or Facebook for a chance to win a prize. Thank you for tuning in today to learn about catapult design and engineering. I hope you enjoy designing, building, and testing your catapults. See you soon.